Okay. I'm ready. Okay. Um, good afternoon, everybody. This is Catherine Knight. Um, Carmelita's not on the call today, so I'll go ahead and, and run through the agenda here. So I'll call the meeting to order at 1.10 on January 5th. And we'll run through the roll call. Uh, Carmelita? Catherine? Here. <laughs> Uh, Judy Begay. She said she was going to be back. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah. Uh, Frank. I'm here. Corey. Here. Meredith. Here. Beth. She said she wasn't going to be here. Okay. So we do have a call on that. Yeah. Okay. Any, anybody else on the call I missed? Okay. Um, okay. The public participation. Is anybody from the public dialed in on the call today? Not at this time. Okay. So we'll move ahead to approval of the minutes. Um, if everybody has had a chance to look at the minutes, does anybody have any comments, changes, additions to the uh, minutes from November? I don't have. Um, well, actually, I I went through it and I I couldn't remember everything that was talked about, and the meetings are quite extensive. And I was kind of wondering what the the protocol was on that. Like, if there was a something that um, didn't jive, I don't I don't think I would be able to. Um, reconcile that with what I can remember from the meeting. So do we just um, assume that the, the minutes are all correct? Um, same, you know, they, yeah, it's been a couple of months, but I, as I read through them, I just like saying like that's pretty much what I remember yeah. we talked about, um, you know, the, the meeting was kind of long and there was a lot in the minutes. So unless somebody can really wants to change something then i would go ahead and ask for somebody to approve the minutes i, I move we approve the minutes okay thank you do i, do I have a second i'll second it's frank okay let me just make a note here Okay, we'll move on to um, item number five, which is the reports discussion items, and we'll turn this over to you, Richard. Absolutely, thank you, and thank you, board. Uh, you'll have to bear with me just a moment as I get this presentation available. I'm, I'm actually attending this meeting from Washington, D.C., and I'm on a computer I've never used before, so it's just... Uh, a bit of fun as we try to get this all going here. So let me see if I can share my screen. Alrighty, and uh, please be mindful that I cannot see any hands raised. Um, so can someone verbally confirm that they can see what uh, I have up? Uh? Yep, I, I can see it. Perfect. All righty, so we have our director's report for January 5th, 2023. Again, I am Richard Tawar, the interim library director, and I'll go ahead and get on to it. So first off, I will not be interim library director for too much longer. I'm happy to confirm that our second round of recruitment for the new library director was successful, and I'm happy to communicate to you all that Linda Tilson has been selected as the new library director. Uh, Linda is coming from Eagle, Colorado, and has 22 years of experience as a library director. She recently served from 2013 to present as the Eagle Valley Library District Director over in Colorado. Uh, her start date is a bit up in the air. Right now, what I have in front of me is the 21st of February. 
Uh, she'll begin her uh, tenure here remotely, uh, and then later in March she'll be moving in person. I, I think that's just the logistics of getting moved, you know, in a, in a bit of a challenging weather time. Um, I'll have more of a bio, you know, to come, but uh, I can share that she previously lived in Tucson and has also worked in Phoenix. Um, she comes from a resort town also, so some of the unique geographical challenges that uh, Flagstaff has. I'm not sure she is up to up to the challenge, so we're very excited for that. Um, I will be serving as interim, you know, until she comes in, so you'll have to put up with me for one more board meeting. Um, but yeah, we're happy to get that moving forward. Is there any questions before I move forward? Hey Richard, will there be will there be an opportunity um, like an open house or something to greet the new director when she arrives in person? Um, at this time, I don't have that information available. Um, that'll be up to probably Heidi Hansen to set up if she wants to do that, but I can certainly pass that feedback along to her. And in the interim, while she is working remotely, Kirsten and I will be doing our absolute best to ensure that we get her up to speed, which includes, of course, meeting the board. Okay, thank you. Absolutely. All right, I'll go ahead and keep on moving forward here. OK, so our next update will be regarding the downtown library front entry ADA renovation. And again, the purpose of this renovation is to support an inclusive community and meet Americans with Disability Act's accessibility standards. Um, and the downtown library will be renovating our front entry plaza. The project includes gently sloping walkways based on inclusive design, revamped parking and changes to landscaping necessary for project installation. Public artwork will go along the handrails and there will also be an outdoor seating area for public use. OK, so I have this nice uh, drone shot overhead where you can kind of get a better feel for where we are in the construction phase of the project. Not sure if you guys can see my cursor, but up towards the front of the building, uh, that concrete is the harvest gold. You can also see it all along the staircase to the right and then the final landing. And then the actual ramp is that jet black with uh, a center strip of exposed aggregate. So a good portion of that has been completed. Um, however, there have been some challenges and due to those challenges and an inability to reconcile them, we will be making some changes that I wanted the board to be aware of. And again, if somebody has a, a question or a comment, I cannot see you, but please just feel free to chime in. Uh, so concrete, concrete pours remain an issue. Um, I met with the project manager for this construction, Jeremy DeGator, and also the primary contractor. And we came to the conclusion that uh, the concrete being done is not up to our standards and that subcontractor will be replaced. Um, I'm happy to report that we have already found a suitable replacement and they should be taking over that transition shortly within the next week. Um, some of the harvest gold and jet, back, jet black concrete already poured will need to be replaced as it does not meet quality expectations. Um, there's some cracks in the newly poured concrete. Um, some of it was not graded correctly to the um, accessibility standards that it needs to be and some of the saw cutting was not done correctly. So th there was there was significant issues that caused us to really look at this and, and say that, you know, we need to make a change and, and we have done so. So where does that kind of bring us back on, you know, the actual public, you know, intending to use that? Um, it is still intended to open that regular entry to public access as soon as possible, and I'll get back to that uh, in the next slide. Um, but I, I did want to also say that as a reminder, we'll also need to replace the glass doors and the storefront with a different contractor after the current project is accessible. Um, I had met with our legal team across the street at City Hall to kind of figure out, you know, where's our liability if there's uh, an issue with two different contractors you know, on the same work site. And after speaking with them and the project manager, 
we decided it was best to just have the current contractors finish completely, um, be done with their work site, and then get the uh, the next set of contractors in to replace that storefront. But in terms of becoming truly ADA accessible, um, we will have to wait for that second contractor to come in and replace the storefront. Um, I plan to look at a few different options if there's a, an interim period where the front entry project is complete, but the so the extra contractor cannot get there um, to actually swap the doors out. So that's just something we're mindful of. Obviously, it's the winter and then scheduling is a bit of a challenge for a lot of these contractors, uh, but we have plans in place that should hopefully ensure that we're still meeting accessibility requirements um, while we wait for this transition to occur. And that brings us to scheduling. Um, so obviously with the concrete issues and the weather on uh, as well, we uh, unfortunately had an issue where we lost a week of work because the uh, the contractors all contracted COVID. Um, our end date of January 7th, which is the Saturday, is no longer realistic. That, that simply is not going to happen. Um, so I. This actually says we are in negotiations, but that negotiation negotiation has happened from when I wrote this director's report. Um, we went over scheduling and came to an agreement with the contractors that we will move to a new target end date of February 3rd for them to finish their work. Um, that being said, we're mindful that Flagstaff weather does kind of whatever it wants, um, as I'm sure you all know. So I would not be surprised if that moves into mid-February. But that is that is our new target date that we're shooting for. Hey, Richard, this is Catherine. Mm -hmm. Is that for the entire project to be finished by February 3rd, the railing and the everything? So that will be making sure that we are accessible to the public. Um, when we had negotiations, uh, the contractors were hoping that they could basically open up one side of that front entry because there are two ways to go up to it and then have the other one much closer along Aspen, you know, continually walled off while they worked on it. Um, but, you know, when we were in negotiations, that, that was not something that we wanted to do. Um, so this target date should be the vast majority of the construction being done. The only outstanding issues will really be landscaping um, and you know the the installation of, of plants and trees and what have you, uh, because if we put them in during this time period, it is likely they would not survive the winter. But the the handrails should all be complete. The book rail, the concrete, all of that is intended to be complete. And then the parking lot would go back to parking over there. Yes, um, it's likely based on just where they are in the construction stage that that Aspen area with the the sidewalk. That will still be inaccessible, but the parking lot should be. Okay. And th they should be starting on the parking lot uh, this coming week, is my understanding. Okay, thanks. Absolutely. Okay, actually, before I continue into November uh, statistics, is there any other questions about the front entry? I, I know it's a big project with a lot of eyes on it. All right, I'm not hearing anything, so I will soldier on. Um, unfortunately, I don't. We just got the December statistics earlier today, but well, as I was traveling, I was not able to compile them um, for this report in time. Um, luckily, I did see that Starla did attach those to um, the meeting invitation. So, or not meeting invitation, the, the latest email about the meeting. So uh, please feel free to look over that. Uh, but I do have November ready to go. So as you can see, um, we continue to rise up and meet you know, our expectations of getting back to a post-COVID environment with our attendance um, and house usage of materials, including computer usage, uh, continues to move up. Um, we are still utilizing some of our COVID protocols, um, such as reduced computers. Uh, for those of you who've been in the building, I'm sure you've seen that we've turned every other computer off. Um, that protocol still remains in place. Uh, and yet we're already getting back to, you know, consistent usage without um, 
without creating lines of demand, which once that happens, that's when we start having the hard conversations about when do we open everything back up. Um, but we're getting there and it really goes to show that we're getting really consistent, you know, day in and day out usage of our services, which is great to see. Um, our numbers are all improving, mostly in the you know the 20% range year over year from November 21 to November 22. Um, the only issue of of course going down is uh, we have been doing less programs at our East Flagstaff location due to some staffing issues. Any questions there? All righty. And some more program updates here for November. Uh, local book launch, the Downtown Library and Flagstaff Solstice Publishing partnered to host the launch event for John Van Kat's new book, The San Francisco Peaks and Flagstaff Through the Lens of on November 3rd. The event was a tremendous success with 43 patrons in attendance and uh, as somebody who uh, who rose up through adult services and reference that that is a great number for an adult program. So we're very happy to see that. Digital literacy classes, the downtown library offered six digital literacy classes in October and November through the digital literacy incentive awarded by the Public Library Association. Class topics included computer basics, video conferencing basics, including Zoom, cybersecurity, internet basics, and iPad basics. We had EFCL board game night at Bookman's on Friday, November 8th. 27 participants met for queer board game night hosted by Bookman's in partnership with EFCL. And a couple other programs. A Chanteau Begay event. The downtown library was honored to host world class local painter Chanteau Begay at the community living room program on November 16th. Mr. Begay inspired attendees with stories of his upbringing and the refuge he found in art. And last thing I'd like to share, just something fun. Uh, we had a couple school visits in November at our East Flagstaff Community Library location, including two classes from Mount Eldon Middle School and one from Northern Christian for a total of 48 students. And we got a ton of a uh, ton of thank you cards that I wanted to make sure I shared and take some pictures of because they were very cute and very, very heartwarming. And finally, just a couple other updates. Um, so the library and proof studios has agreed to a contract and work on a new library website will begin later this month. Um, after I return from DC, which will be uh, shortly after Martin Luther King Day, we have our initial kind of project onboard meeting and I'm very excited to get that process done. I know our current website has been uh, you know, a bit long in the tooth for quite a bit and we're, we're happy to get a new slick coat of paint on it and we're getting ready to get that process started. And just a reminder for everybody that the Grand Canyon Library, we will be moving services to the old Chase Bank building. And the date for that is uh, to be determined, but likely February or March, depending on construction. And that's the end of my slideshow for you all. So I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen. And is there any questions that anybody has for me? Alrighty, well, thank you. And uh, if those questions pop up, feel free to give me a holler. Thanks, Richard. Uh, the next. Thanks, thanks, oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I was talking to you. I was just saying thanks, Richard, for um, running these meetings as you know, outside your typical role for all these months. Oh, thank you. And you know, I'm happy to do it. I'm happy to look at this as a as a teachable moment for myself. And you know build and develop new skills that'll help me serve my community better. Um, the next item on the agenda is the new library board schedule. Should we call that up or? Does everybody? I can share, I can share my screen really quick um, with the detail of what that is. OK, great. Okay, so here's the, is that supposed to say 2023 at the top? It is supposed to say 2023. <laughs> okay, okay, 
So here's the schedule um, for this coming year and the topics. It looks similar, similar to how we ran last year's uh, schedule. Sort of running through the the main library and then getting updates, you know, from each of the outline uh, county libraries. And a vacation in July and then in December. Does anybody have any comments, questions about the schedule? I think it looks great. Yeah, it looks good to me too. Okay, then. It says yes, it says approval, so I assume approval. Okay, so. Uh, <laughs> If everybody agrees that this looks okay, could I have a nomination to approve the 2023 schedule? One quick question before we uh, move to that um, was, will a formal like calendar invite be sent out for each of these or should we add them to our own calendars? A formal calendar invite will be sent out for these meetings. Perfect, then I move that we approve the schedule. Okay, do I have a second? I second. Thank you, Corey. OK, uh, moving down to item action item number six, which is the policy review and approval. There were several a few policies that were sent out to us, and hopefully all of you guys got a chance to look at them. Um, Richard, do you want to go over those? Um, I'm not sure what the discussion is supposed to be here. Sure. So um, as we've done in the past, uh, whenever we are making some changes to our policy, we do want to do our best to, you know, bring these to the library board for a vote of approval. Um, that being said, if the board needs more time to look over these, you know, we can absolutely move a vote to next time. But I do want to go ahead and spend some time kind of reviewing these updated policies and ensuring that um, uh, I'm, I'm communicating the changes effectively. Okay. Um, is there anybody else on the board that needs more time? I, I did read through them, so I'm good. All right, Richard, I'd say go for it. All righty, give me just a second. <clears throat> so actually, Kirsten, can I have, can you? Pull these up and share your screen so I can be looking at them while uh, while I'm talking. Should Absolutely. Just... Hold on one second. Which one would you like first? Let's go ahead and start with the circulation policy. That that's the one with the least amount of uh, meaningful change. One second. Thank you. Again, I have to apologize to the board. I, I am struggling a little bit with this computer. It's it's I'm visiting my folks and uh, they got me on this ancient computer and it is uh, it is chugging and uh, struggling to keep up. OK, can everyone see my screen? Yep. OK. Perfect. Thank you, Kirsten. You can actually scroll all the way down to the bottom for this one. So for the circulation policy, there has been a very slight amendment, but as always, when we make a change to our policies, we want to go ahead and you know put them before the board for approval. Uh, so at the very end, the only difference in how this policy exists is that very last line of our interlibrary loans um, policy that is in red. Uh, this service is limited to full privilege library card holders in good standing with verified contact information, including a phone number and or email address. So the reason for this inclusion is we have instituted temporary cards and unfortunately with a lot of those temporary cards, we have very you know, transient individuals utilizing them. So we wanted to go ahead and unfortunately strip ILL privileges from those cards because we were having some issues with people requesting a lot of library books from 
other libraries and then just walking off and leaving the area with them. And when that happens, it unfortunately puts you know us on the hook financially for replacing those materials for the other libraries. And often those materials are not replaceable. So we have included uh, limiting you know interlibrary loans to just full privilege library card holders, which um, for those of you who may not have experienced it are you know those people who have come to the library have shown proof of residence and you know have a library account in good standing. <clears throat> so any questions on that one? I, I know it's a very slight change, but again, we want to make sure we're doing our due diligence and communicating this to the board and the community. OK, so. Kirsten, if you could move to the vulnerable individuals policy. OK, so the vulnerable individuals policy as well as an additional policy that's attached the uh, the unattended children policy. Um, there's no actual policy changes with those, but what we have done is split those two policies away from each other because they used to be combined into one. However, we thought it was not uh, in the best efforts of being inclusive to all of uh, the community that we serve to do so. Um, we changed some of the language in the vulnerable individuals policy in particular. Um, you'll see that second line. Some patrons have a neurodivergence that impair the ability to comply with the behavioral policy of the library. So we have changed some of the language briefly and then split those two policies up, but the actual processes in place that the library utilizes have stayed the same. But again, I want to communicate as best I can to everybody that, you know, these are the new policies and these are why they are changing. If you'd like, Kirsten, you can bring up the unattended children policy as well. Uh, although, again, I, I think in that one in particular, none of the language has changed. It's just been split off from the vulnerable individuals. Are there any questions about that one? I know it's fairly straightforward. OK, and then the last policy that I have for you all is the meeting room policy. Um, so this one was uh, a bit more abstract because we had certain standards in place, but we didn't have an official policy as approved by any governing body, so we felt that we should go ahead and move towards that. So this one, most of most of the standards in place are the standards we've already used, but it's just finalizing and confirming that policy and then communicating it alongside of our other policies. The only strict change that we've made to this uh, compared to what we had been operating under in the past is um, really just making sure that Number one, there were processes in place that if an individual wanted to use the meeting rooms, they had to, you know, request them in advance. Uh, unfortunately, we had a number of people who were coming in every day to utilize our meeting rooms and were really not using them for their intended purpose. They were, you know, hanging out and eating in them, if you will, and not utilizing them as a group. So under the who can use, these rooms part of that policy. So I'm struggling to get it down. Yeah. So you'll see you'll see some changes to the who cannot use and who can use this policy. Um, and <clears throat> large rooms are intended for use by nonprofit or community groups for the purposes of conducting meetings, um, not just for one or two people to you know 
hang out and, and chat in. Uh, whereas the small rooms, you know, yes, they are used by individuals for the purposes of engaging in informational or educational activities um, or taking interviews, et cetera. But again, not to just hang out and practice music, you know, eat, uh, et cetera. So that that's the biggest change to this policy. And under when can I use the rooms? They are available on a first come first basis. However, scheduling of the rooms must be made two days in advance. And again, that, that is because we had a number of individuals coming in in the morning saying, hey, is the room available? And then just really utilizing that room to the exclusion of others every single day. So by instituting a two day period where they had to go ahead and get it in advance, you know, we can more prioritize who is utilizing those rooms for it the room's intended purpose, which was meetings and interviews and what have you. So I'm not going to go over all the text in here because um, it's pretty standard, but if there are any questions, I'm happy to take them. OK, um, again, if there are any questions or, or if the board is not prepared to make a vote on accepting these, we can absolutely move that to the next meeting, but I will defer to uh, the board on how they'd like to proceed. Does anybody on the board need extra time to read through them um, and vote next month? Or is everybody good with today? I just have one uh, clarifying question. OK. And then otherwise, I think I'll be fine. Um, Richard, on the unintended. Can you all hear me? Yeah. OK. We, yeah, um, we can hear you. My I'm getting error messages on screen um, on the unintended children policy. Do I understand it right that if they're under 10, their parents need to be with them wherever they are in the library? That is correct. Um, that that's <laughs> that, that's usually a topic of discussion with many parents who, you know, want to more or less let their let their children, you know, run freely. But uh, we do need them to stay with them. Yeah, OK, just checking. I totally have broken that policy, but I, you know, my daughter's old now, but I'll be sure to follow in the future. <laughs> <laughs> because you know when you're looking in the stacks yourself as a parent and if your child is just getting a book from the children's area I think that's probably not really what you're talking about or this caused the issue as much as maybe um you know um running about or causing yeah this is uh this unfortunately is one of those things that you know we need to have the policy because some individuals in the past have you know taken advantage um you know dropped their kids off and then left for the day and yeah. you know or you know they'll be you know hanging out on a public access computer and then the kid is just you know running through the building and you know getting into staff areas and unfortunately things like that so yeah um it, it's one of those ones that we're definitely a, a little bit more lenient on enforcing, you know, and keeping enforcement in place. You know, we're, we're a community hub and we want, you know, communities to feel welcome. Uh, but it, unfortunately, <laughs> there's just uh, every now and then there's a case where we need to, you know, have something to fall back and point towards to, you know, correct the behavior. Yeah, and I guess if, if kids were coming over from like Mount Eldon Middle School, which is probably the school in closest proximity to a library in Flagstaff. They are over 10, right? They're more like 12 and up. Yes. Yeah, OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are there any more questions or any clarifications or time, time to review them? OK, then uh, can I hear a motion uh, for the review and changes of the policies presented today?
I move we approve the policy changes. Thank you. Does someone want to second that? I can second that. Thanks, Frank. Mm -hmm. Okay, on to um, item number seven, informational items from the board members. Does anybody have any Thing they want to bring up, talk about, present. I think just mentioning, um, I, I I would be curious to know what the results were of the little Christmas tree donation thing that the library did. Um, you know, my wife and I walked down there and we did a donation, but I was just wondering overall what what if the community did participate or what the results of that were, because it was kind of a cool idea. You know, I, I don't actually know. Mary Corcoran, our librarian in our reference team, is the one who put that together. So all kudos go to Mary. Um, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure if anybody participated or not. I'll have to to circle back to to her when I return. OK, thanks. Mm -hmm. Any anybody have anything else to offer questions, comments? Items they want to bring up. OK, then we'll move on to number eight agenda for future meetings. I guess we pretty well covered that when we looked at the schedule. So next month. I think was the uh, main library. Report, was that right? For the next, uh, yes. Yes, yes. That's okay. okay, so does anybody want to add something to the agenda besides the uh, report we'll get from the main library? I did have one question, Richard. Remember several months back in the fall when we had that presentation about the 15 or 20 year plan for the county. Did the library participate in anything? Remember, we, we kind of had an extensive discussion on that about how the library could help out, but I never so, saw anything that ever happened. Was this for the regional plan? Yeah, right. OK, yeah, so we did we did work through that office and they did provide us a number of those um, regional plan boxes that have uh, uh, you know, storybooks and accoutrements uh, about the regional plan. And we did make those for circulation. Um, but outside of that, um, I think that, that has been it. OK, so they haven't reached out anymore to No. Yeah. I've seen a few things in the newspaper about what they're doing. Absolutely. OK, um, so if nobody has anything to add to the agenda next month. The next board meeting will be February 2nd, which will be the first Thursday in February. And with that, if anybody has anything to add before we close it out today. Then I will adjourn the meeting at 2.47 and ask for a motion to approve the adjournment. So moved. Is there a second? All right, thanks, Corey. OK, with that, I guess we're done for January and we will all get together in February. Thank you. Yep, thank you for leading the meeting. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. OK, have a good day.